quick little advice. Be careful being around somebody who hates correction. Be careful of being around someone who hates considering that maybe they might actually be wrong. Be really, really careful with that because you know what the Bible calls that person? The Bible calls that person a fool. And you know what a fool is according to the Bible in Proverbs? Wicked. And what does the Bible say about that person? It says better to encounter a bear who has her cubs stolen from her than to encounter a foolish person. I paraphrase. But Sean Wan, Kah Lainla, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekwakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the, of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles in great wisdom. Coming back at you with another lesson. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask the Most High. I'm going to start in the book of James. I want to go to James chapter 1. One moment. Let's go here. The book of James chapter 1. The book of James, chapter 1. Let's go to verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So that obviously means we have to be tested. Got to go through adversity in order to be tried, in order for our faith to be proven. Let's go to verse 4. But let patience have her work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. But if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the Most High that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So the Most High controls the keys to knowledge. Let's go here. So it's not about asking to be the best teacher or the most popular or the best speaker, or have the most followers, but asking to be to be approved by the Most High, to be accepted by Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, not going against the order that this construction temple is being built on. Why attack the floor plan? and the building of the Lord's temple. <clears throat> Let's go here. Ephesians 4. I'm going to go to the book of Ephesians. Let's go to verse chapter 4. Let's go to verse 22. That ye, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after the most high is created in righteousness and true holiness. I want to get, let's 
go up. Right here. Ephesians 4, verse 9. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach. So the Most High sacrificed his only begotten son to give us the temperate mortar to build his house. So it's foolish to attack the foundation, the floor plan, the architecture that the Most High has set in place, built upon the doctrine of Yahweh and on the apostles and teachers, the disciples. Disciples means students, students of Yahweh So it's foolishness to attack the foundation and the labor that's been built on the brotherhood being perfected and building upon other men's labor. That takes humility. <coughs> James 1, verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. The perfecting of the saints, building on the spirit of faith and unity and truth, built upon the spirit of Yahweh Shai, our chief cornerstone. But if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the Most High that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So is the right approach to attack the Most High's floor plan, his methods, his model, the apostles built upon Yahushua, the disciples, the students that are following this doctrine. Why kick against the pricks instead of doing what the Bible says? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask the Most High. Let's go here. First Kings 3. <clears throat> The book of 1 Kings, chapter 3. Let's go to verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David, his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place a thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. So Solomon was very eager to serve the Lord, as did his father David. <clears throat> in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And the Most High said, Ask what I shall give thee. Oh, this is going somewhere. And Solomon said, 
Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Who is that son? I thought the Most High does not have an only begotten son that's going to occupy the throne of David. It's Yahweh Shai. So the throne is his, already decreed. Verse 7. And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. Most High is dealing with the meek, the humble, the lowly, to show his power in thee. King David had older brothers. Who did the Most High choose? The youngin, the little one. It's all about the will of the Father. At the end of the day, about who? The will of the Father. <clears throat> Shall the axe boast itself against the saw? Or shall the saw and the axe boast itself against the rod or the wood that it was made out of? Has little to nothing to do with us as an individual, but the game plan, the strategy on the chessboard belongs to the king and to the king's son, not us. <clears throat> and Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. David's mind was perfect with the Most High. Verse 7, And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. If thou lack wisdom, pray to the Most High. Let's read that again. First Kings 3, verse 9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. So instead of getting mad or angry, why not rely on our comforter? Go back to James 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the Most High that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Tossed to and from like an unstable ship in a sea storm. 
in a tsunami. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. No foundation. <clears throat> We're going to go here. Let's go to Proverbs 10. Where we're going to start at. Yep. <clears throat> Proverbs 10, verse 17. Let's go to 18. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. So using lies and deception. To hide hatred is hated of the Most High. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Let's go from there. See, Surat 20, verse 5. There is one that keepeth silence and is found wise, and another by much babbling becometh hateful. Woo! <clears throat> so sometimes it's just best to be quiet and cut or accept our losses. We don't need to have a last word or just prove that we're right, ignoring the truth of the matter, but moving with emotions and feelings. That's an effeminate trait. Surat 20, verse 5. There is one that keepeth silence and is found wise, and another by much babbling becometh hateful. So man holdeth his tongue because he had not to answer and some keepeth silence, knoweth his time. There's a time to speak and a time to be quiet. Some man holdeth his tongue because he had not to answer and some keepeth silence, knowing his time. A wise man will hold his tongue till he see opportunity, but a babbler and a fool will regard no time. Being selective, picking and choosing our battles wisely, knowing when to take the low. He that useth many words shall be abhorred, and he that talketh, he that useth many words shall be abhorred, and he that taketh to himself authority therein shall be hated. He that taketh to himself authority shall be hated. How I many have heard? Several times, I'm just a student. What is that? Disciple. Why try to elevate ourselves to occupy or land on the moon? That's too stressful. That's a burden. Why destroy ourselves trying to be over righteous? overzealous, trying to out-jump Michael Air Jordan. Not going to happen. Let's read that again. <clears throat> he that useth many words shall be aboard, and he that taketh to himself authority therein shall be hated. There is a sinner that have good success in evil things, and there is a gain 
that turneth to loss. Well, you might win the battle, but lose the war. Yeah, you might win the argument, but if you lose the war, it was all in vain. Sometimes we got to accept and cut our losses. Wow, this is heavy here. Surah 20, verse 11. There is an abasement because of glory, and there is that lifted up his head from a low estate. So humility comes before honor. Let's get this one. I like this one right here. Surah 20, verse 14. Nope, that's not it. Let's keep, let's keep going right here. Verse 16. The fool saith, I have no friends. I have no thanks for all my good deeds. And they that eat my bread speak evil of me. Who's complaining about their allies turning against them? So you're taking on the spirit of your daddy, the devil. Evil E, old sleazy, that old serpent, the devil. We got to read that again. Because that's, that's, that cuts deep. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is no understanding in them. A fool has no understanding. Let's read that again. Surah 20 or 16. The fool saith, I have no friends. I have no thanks for all my good deeds. And they that eat my bread speak evil of me. So he's just looking to get <laughs> exalted. The wicked doer. They that eat thy bread. Let's read this one. Proverbs 10. Let's go to verse 21. The lips of the righteous feed many but fools die for want of wisdom. My goodness, that's beautiful. <clears throat> so selfless service. Yahawashan came as a servant to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and to give water to the thirsty. Servitude is the mindset. How can I be an asset to the brotherhood? Let's go here. Psalms 133. The mindset is, what can I do to help the brotherhood? Not myself. Psalms 133, verse 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That doesn't mean coming together with pedophiles, gangbangers, murderers, and drug dealers. Being joined in the unity of faith and the spirit of truth. This doctrine Tempered mortar to build our house, our brotherhood. Man, this is beautiful. Let's go back to one of my favorites. <clears throat> Surah 20, 
or 16. The fool saith, I have no friends. I have no thanks for all my good deeds. And they that eat my bread speak evil of me. It's about the brotherhood, not the individual. Proverbs 10, verse 21. The list of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. So the elect has the bread of life and bellies flowing with living waters. Everybody else is left out with dry lips that can't close their mouth and ashy elbows. Ashy knees and ashy elbows and a dry wide open mouth that can't be closed, looking thirsty and bugged out, hungry for knowledge. Let's go here. <coughs> Proverbs 10. One moment. There's another good one in here that I like. Oh, here it is. There it is. Proverbs 10, verse 20. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. So the tongue of the just is as choice silver. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4, somewhere around verse 7. 2 Corinthians 4, somewhere around verse 7. Go up. Let's get the context. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. See, we don't faint if we're being continually fed and having our thirst quenched by the full, unadulterated doctrine. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the Most High, not trying to get approval by our fellows, but doing the will of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, then everything else falls in place. The brotherhood will recognize each other based on the deeds. Verse 9, excuse me, Second Corinthians 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. That's the context. This ministry, this gospel. Jump down to verse 7. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of the most high and not of us. So this is the most high's treasure and ministry. That he has a portion out to each as he sees fit. This earthen, this treasure in earthen vessels. The full doctrine. Proverbs 10, verse 20, the tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. So there is no guile found in the mouth of the Lord's elect. Some of the men of the Lord speak rough. But if the doctrine is true, 
guess what? The elect are not going to be condemned. No gal found in the mouth of the Lord's elect. His precious jewels. The apple of his eye. Corrupt communication is dross. It's reprobate silver. So that means it's good for nothing. But the treasure of the mouth is the doctrinal wisdom and knowledge. I think I've talked enough. Now my voice is dry. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get this one. Sirach 20, verse 18. To slit upon a pavement is better to slit with the tongue. Oh, we got to read that again. So our tongues can be a sharp sword that can either help or help correct or hurt. Excuse me. Help correct or hurt. Wow. Let's get that again. Surat 20. Now I lost my place. Oh, here we go. Verse 18. To slip upon a pavement is better than to slip with the tongue. So the fall of the wicked shall come speedily. A real corrupt communication is deviating from the doctrine of our Father through the Mashiach, our Messiah. We'll go ahead and close out here. No, not there. Go back to Proverbs 17. <clears throat> Once I learn how to count, we'll go to Proverbs 17. Let's jump down. Proverbs 17, verse 23. A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. We're not doing this for our homeboys or our college fraternity brotherhood or the lacrosse team that we played for in college or the golf team, the golf club, all bullshit or for women. No popularity. Man, we've got to read that again. Proverbs 17 verse 23. A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. The wicked are going to be destroyed. The foolish. Verse 25. A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him. Now, our father, the heavenly father, our mother also is Sophia, wisdom. Let's read that again. So we could grieve the father when we are disobedient, rebellious. A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him. Also, to punish the just is not good, nor to strike princes for equity. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, no vain babbling, false doctrine, our opinions, what we think, what we feel, we go back to uh, <laughs> Elder Apostle Gabar. Feelings, talking about 
feelings. <laughs> Bugged out. Bugged out. All that emotions. <clears throat> Untempered estrogen throws off our masculinity. If it's not put in check, I feel, I believe. Let's read that again. <clears throat> Proverbs 17, verse 23. He that have knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. And we read that. See? Surat 20, verse 5. There is one that keepeth silence and is found wise, and another by much babbling, becometh hateful. Some men holdeth his tongue because he hath not to answer, and some keepeth silence, knoweth his time. There's a time to speak and a time to just be quiet. The Lord is in control. Set up order. Establish the chief cornerstone, the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, Abashiach, then built upon the apostles, elders, teachers. Not you, young man. I think that's it. So we are building on other men's foundations. There is, there should be no room for pride. See, Ephesians 4, verse 29. Let not corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Temperate mortar a spiritual doctrine from the heavens, from the Father, delegated to his prophets. See? Remember we read, and grieve not, we'll get it again. See, verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay, it's in 17. Right here, Proverbs 17 and 25, a foolish son, a foolish son, is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that have that bear him. Going outside of the father's instruction. Let's get this one. Grieves the father and deviates from Sophia, wisdom. Let's go to John 7, <clears throat> verse 16. Let's go to verse 15. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Yahweh answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Where is the room to be proud? I'm a student. Now, I'll say that proudly. It's easy to be a student. Still learning. 
there's going to be some bumps and bruises, blunders, hiccups, trips, falls. The Bible says a righteous man falleth seven times, but gets back up again. Something along those lines. The hopeful elect. Let's read that again. John 7, verse 16. Yahweh Shai answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of the Most High or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Not about self-glory, but the unity of faith, the unity of the brotherhood, built upon the same spiritual message. Not self-glory. Did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keepeth the law. Why go ye about to kill me? <clears throat> so they're pushing law, law, law. But these are the same men that went against Moses in the wilderness. So they really hate instruction. Hate order. Murmurers. Rebels. And don't understand the doctrine because they're not doing the will of the Father. Verse 17. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of the Most High or whether I speak of myself. So our leaders know the doctrine, have the floor plans and the blueprint to build the Lord's house from the instruction manual of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. I shimmer quackadash, rock a thumb. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Quam yasharala, and the bad the bow. We got, we got next, Lord willing. Shalom.